we'll make it work. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching this Facebook Live. This is a voice on the face of Dr. Tolu, CEO, founder of Living Spring Family Medical Center here in the good city of Mansfield, Texas, where we believe in helping our patients live long and well because we believe the quality of life is just as important as the quantity of life. I'm very excited today to have with us Dr. Elisa Chang, and we'll be talking about or addressing the statement, Doc, my finances are affecting my health, and we're having talks with a money coach. Thank you, Dr. Chang, for being here. I'm excited to have you on. Thanks for having me. And actually, my last name is Chang. Chang. As if the C-H-O-J, actually. C-H-O-J, actually. Oh, Jang. Jang? 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 Okay, Dr. Lisa Jang. Yes. Jang. Yes. Tell me. <laughs> All right. Now that we have uh, that settled, can you kindly introduce yourself, who you are, and what you do to our viewers? Yeah. So I am an ophthalmologist, yeah, so an ophthalmologist surgeon, ophthalmologist, surgeon as well as a life and money coach. I got him. I got him uh, uh, involved in like learning about personal, personal finances, finances pretty finances early on. Pretty early on. No, I've always kind of loved money, even as a kid. Me, I was no one I was hoarding my money. I just like to count my money. I have a really pretty important wallet. I would save up my money and just have it there. And not that I never spent it. Not that I never spent it. I wasn't really all about like buying clothes. My sister actually was more jealous because she was really into really into having designer clothes. Having designer clothes. And and you know, I was you know, I, I was I managed money well from college, money well from college and, then and then I started, I started med school, school and I did an MD PhD program MD which is program, on which average eight on years average eight years and I did in Cleveland Ohio did which has a relatively low, low cost of living so, so because, because it's eight years a lot of us a lot of actually get actually get. Uh, a primary residence, uh, we, primary buy residence house, we buy a house, house during that time. It's long mm -hmm. enough, it's and long enough, and even though we don't make a whole lot of money, make twenty thousand dollars a year. That's it. Mortgages, mortgages were super easy, were super to, easy get. to get. Super easy to get. You know, this was kind of the cause of the kind of the cause of the 2008 was the fact that mortgages. I mean, if someone's dog, I mean, if someone's dog could get a mortgage back then. Wow. Wow. And so, in reading and about, so in reading about like mortgages, like and, mortgages and I learned more about personal finances, and I learned more about, and learned more about and investing. Learned more about investing. And I and actually during I my graduate actually school during my graduate years, school years uh, read Rich Dad Poor uh, Dad, Rich Dad which Poor Dad, which enticed me to get into real estate. Me to get into so real estate, started doing so some real estate, doing investing. Some real estate investing. Okay. In retrospect, in retrospect, school was the first school was time that the first time um, that I experienced um, burnout just, just from lack of autonomy. My PI, my was from my PI, which was my boss, and your boss, and your boss, boss and your he, was was very very he was very much a micromanager. micromanager. Like he didn't like that I like, listened to like music when I was working. When I was working. And I was like, and so I would like, listen to headphones. So I would listen and to headphones. He said, well, it's distracting. I'm like, well, no one else can hear you. I'm like, distracting you. I'm like, distracting you. I'm like, me. I would know what's me. I would know what's distracting me. So I, so at I, that point, was like, that okay, was like, I don't okay, want to have, to work, I don't want to have to work for someone else. How do I make that okay. happen? How do I make that happen? And, and you know, of course, I know, of course, I can, you know, be in private practice, you know, be, be my own boss someday. someday but but that, was that was still a long way off. That was still a long way off. And so I really started thinking so about I really financial, started thinking independence, about financial really independence really early. Okay. Wow. That's impressive. And I, I, I look forward to you sharing more of your story. For those who are watching live, please hashtag live. Hi, Grace. And hi, Dr. Una. Thanks for joining. And those who are watching replay, hashtag replay. All right. So you touched on the second question already as to why you do what you do. So one of the things that sometimes I, you know, we, we encounter in, you know, patient care, at least when patients come to see me, you know, I say, you've got to eat healthy. Um, oh, they said it can hardly hear you. It's echoing. Oh, Okay. All right, um, Ms. Chita, we'll try um, and, and see if we can adjust that. Um, thank you, Tanisha Trilo, for joining. Um, all right, so one of the things that uh, people tend to say, because, you know, we talk about healthy eating, um, you know, that it's important to eat healthy. And one of the throwbacks I get is that eating healthy is expensive. All right. Um, what what would you say to that as someone who is also a physician and also a, a money coach? Um, healthy eating healthy is expensive. 
Well, it's true that well, buying fresh fruits and vegetables, vegetables can, can be a little bit more expensive. Eating healthy is not actually healthy expensive. Is not actually expensive. Eating, eating, out, is eating expensive. out is expensive. Eating out is expensive. And especially, and I think especially like I doing restaurants like now. Days, restaurants now prices are higher. Prices are now, higher. Prices, now they prices, had a hard time during the pandemic, during the pandemic, and they need to recover. They need to recover. But if you but if uh, you cook at home, uh, that's cook at home, the that's the that's way to eat healthy. Eat healthy. And that's much cheaper that's than going out. Cheaper than going no, out I know so many people. No, I know so many people. Buy lunch every day. Buy lunch every day. Lunch every day. That saves a lot of money. And in fact, it okay. and in fact, it has been frozen fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables is actually it's not as healthy as eating fresh and vegetables because vegetables because the the fruits and vegetables and vegetables what happens is you lose some of your lose some of your but then it actually it actually stabilizes. Where with fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables continues to decrease with time. And when you think about it, when you think about it, place that's grown, place that's grown, it's refrigerators and refrigerators and trucks throughout the country, throughout the country, and you finally get it, and now you get it, and now you get it, and now you're eating a week after you got it, after you got it, nutritional value, nutritional value, your vegetables are actually less. Actually, the last thing we Okay. Um, so it sounds like, you know, one of the things that we're emphasizing here is that, that eating healthy is not expensive. It may be a little bit more um, of an effort because it's best to make your own food. So you have control of the amount of stuff you put in it, the amount of oils or, or things are not necessarily healthy that you put in it. And also, um, frozen vegetables are an option because they last longer and they're relatively stable in the freezer, relatively. Right. So, um, sorry, the reason why I'm, I'm reemphasizing what you're saying is because uh, people are saying that there's an echo when you speak. I want to make sure that people get the nuggets you're you're dropping here. All right. Next hiccup. And I'm talking about hiccup because people tend to say, you know what, Doc, I really want to eat healthy. But these things are hiccup. These things are an issue. Um, budgeting. You know, um, I actually had a patient come in and essentially what we spent the time doing during the appointment is going over a budget. You know, um, because money issues were a big. Um, is can you hear me? Okay. Um, it just paused. Um, it just paused for a little bit. For a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on with the internet today. Okay. Um, so hiccup number two: budgeting is heavy math. I can't do it. What are your thoughts on that? Because the whole idea of budgeting sounds scary. It's really not heavy math. It's really, it's not really, heavy math. It's really addition and subtraction for the most part. For the most and part. That, and is that is that elementary is school grade math, right? School it's grade not, math, right? It's not it's not calculus. It's not, calculus, um, it's not um, geometry. It's not even geometry. It's, not even it's really a lot of addition and subtraction. Maybe sometimes you have to do some multiplication division. So... It's so really about it's your really mindset. about your mindset. It's the fact that people don't want to budget. Don't want to budget. Budgets often feel budgets restrictive. often feel restricted. And sometimes I talk and about more I like talk about more like plan. making a spending plan. Right, just like okay. if you have an eating right, plan, like you have an eating plan. You have a spending plan. You have a spending plan. If you think of a diet, if you think of a diet, you think more like restrictive, a just like a budget. Mm. So. So we have to deal with money. We have to deal with money. That's the way society works. You also have to eat in order to have nutrition and fuel for yourself. Nutrition and fuel for yourself. But but if you plan what you eat and you plan what you buy, plan what you buy, it does take some effort. It does take some effort. That's how you're going to get your. That's how you're going to get your goal. And when you think about dieting, when you think about dieting, a lot of times you're a lot of about times being restriction for being a certain point, just, a to certain certain point just to get a certain goal. But then you can get to that certain goal. But then you can get to that certain goal. And then you're going to still and gain weight back when you go back to your normal habit. habit. So like with a spending plan, so like with a spending plan, just like plan, an eating plan, just like the eating plan, the eating plan, plan, the eating you plan figure plan, out, you figure out what you're going to eat to maintain your weight, maintain your weight. With the spending plan, you're going to figure plan, out what you need to do. Figure out what you need to do to maintain your finances. To maintain your in finances a in a healthy state. Okay, I, I agree with you on the budgeting part. The budgeting uh, budget sometimes can seem restrictive, but when you make a plan, it actually helps long term. When you make a plan, you you get into less trouble, and it's also one of the things that help also with finances, um, and and can also prevent hiccups or prevent um, issues, in, including um, health related ones that are tied to your finances. So the budgeting may seem a little restricted, but essentially you're making a spending plan. I love that a spending plan where you're adding essentially right um, how much you're making 
per month and how much you're spending and making sure there, there's some balance. Right? Yeah, in the end, um, in the end, you want your you spending want your to be less than your income. Less than your income. Otherwise, you're just going to keep constantly just gonna get keep behind. Constantly get behind. Okay, that is key. So you want to find out how much you're spending and how much you're making and making sure that what you are making is more than what you're spending. Very, very, very important. It takes time, but it can be done. You have an idea of how much you make a month and then just write down the typical or average um, expenses or average costs for some of the things that you tend or the things that you tend to buy every month and get an idea. It will give you a better picture of what um, what's coming in and what's going out. Okay. Right. And what gets now, watched and what gets watched tracked, and what gets, gets monitored tracked, and gets, gets monitored changed. and gets changed. So if you really look so at, you everything, really that look at spending, everything that you're spending, you will build to find things that maybe you don't actually you don't actually need. And this means looking and at your credit card and looking at, your credit looking card at and things that are automatically that are getting, getting, charged, getting, every getting month. charged every month. You may have some subscription you, you have signed up for you signed up that for, you really don't that use. You really don't and you're not going to catch if you're not looking at your statements. At your statements. So unnecessary subscriptions. And that goes to my next question, Doc. It says, hiccup number three, um, I need everything I buy. So we don't need, so and, we no don't need, needs and no one needs buy. everything they buy. Right? You need, right? You need some food to survive. Food to survive. You need some shelter. You need some shelter. You need, you know, basic you need, things you know, like basic clothing. Things like clothing. But you don't need designer but clothing. You don't need designer clothing. You don't even need new clothing. You don't even need new clothing. Right? You could go to right? you could go thrift to stores, the Salvation, Salvation Army, and Army, and get clothing very cheaply. And get clothing very cheaply. So watch so when you say watch need. Watch when you say need. The language is important. Language is important. You want a lot of things. You want a lot of things. And you're making that and mean you're you need making a lot that mean you need a lot of things. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have things, things that you, that you want. Have things that you want. But you can't necessarily but you can't have everything necessarily you want. Have everything you want. I mean, some people can, I mean, and then those people can, are and then those a little bit more happy. Little bit because more maybe happy they just don't want maybe as they just things. don't want as many things. Wow. So the language is important. Do we really need everything that we um we say we do? Um um, and maybe restructuring that and focusing on what, what we actually need versus what we want will help with that balance too. All right, awesome, awesome. This is good. All right, Doc, next question. What are three tips you would say to saving and keeping money at any level? Because sometimes someone may be watching and saying, well, you're both doctors, easy for you to say, but these are principles that apply at every stage. Um, and I can relate to the, you know, shopping at thrift stores and Salvation Army. I did that for, for a minute. Um, and, and so what would you say at any stage, at any level, what are three tip, three tips to saving and keeping money? So you could take so one key from the government, key from right? The they government. take your taxes they take straight, your from your paycheck, straight from your so paycheck that there's so no... that there's no... There's no question that question you're going to get paid. That they're going to get paid. So you can do the same so thing. You can do the same right? thing. You can take right? money out of your you paycheck money before, before you ever spend it, you ever and, spend put it, it and put it somewhere else in order to save it. In order to save it. If you're working a W two job, job, you can actually have you can your actually direct have deposit, your go, direct into deposit different go into different accounts. So you can open up an so other account an somewhere. Other account somewhere. And just have some just amount have of money automatically come out of every paycheck. Every paycheck. And deposit and deposit into this different into account, this different account, and you know, and, out of sight, out of know, mind, out of sight, out of mind. And over time, and over time, it's going to build. It's and going to build, and you'll have some savings. You'll have some savings. So that's one great so way. That's one great way. And actually, it's and actually a it's great way to save a great for way retirement. to save for retirement because for your because retirement for accounts, your at retirement work, accounts at work. Often you do just have Often it directly, just taken, have out it directly your taken out of your paycheck and put into the and retirement put into account. The retirement account. If you do have any, kind of, have any match, kind of employer match, you definitely want you definitely to want to put into your retirement put accounts, into your retirement accounts at least as much at least as much to get that full to match get that full match because if they're matching if they're matching that's guaranteed mm -hmm. return that's guaranteed return on your investment on your investment and there's no better and there's no better than investment than that. Okay. All right. So. Um, I, I want to highlight the two you've spoken because again, we're still echoing when you speak and I don't want people to miss this. So number one, the government practices this. They take money 
taxes out of our paycheck before it actually hits us. And so the same idea, have a, a percentage, maybe 10% or however much you want to save, taking automatically out of your account every day um, and, and have that saved. Out of sight, as you mentioned, out of mind. All right. So that's very, very important because that's the way you save the government. I, I like I like the analogy. Number two, you meant uh, you talked about matching your 401k. Um, and and um, if and for those who, who who are familiar with this, of course, you know, that's where your employee employer would put money away for you. You should match that. So you should try to match what they're they're saying they're going to give you. Um, um, you want to is essentially you want to take advantage of um, the 401k options that your your uh your employer offers because that's essentially free money. Okay. If that's an option for you. All right, doc, any one more tip you gave us two. Uh, one more tip. Uh, so let's see. The first so, one was see. the first one uh, was uh, automatically take money out. Second, and then, uh, and then the uh, retirement. The also, really, also, really, uh, Spending uh, toward your spending values, toward and, thinking your values about and thinking about when you spend money, when you spend money that it actually brings, that you, it lasting actually brings joy. you lasting joy versus when you spend versus money when you spend money because you because love the you actual love feeling the of, actual spending, feeling at that of moment. spending at that moment. But a week later, but a week later, whatever you bought is, just, you sitting bought is just sitting in your closet. I mean, I've seen people, I mean, I've seen people, including my sister, including my sister. Who still who, who have, still who have clothing who have, in their closet that, that still have the tag because they've never worn because they've never worn that item. Worn that item. If there is something, there that, you is bought, something that you bought and you realize and you, you really didn't need it, you didn't need it. You already have something you already just have like something it. just like it. No. You might want to actually consider you might want returning to actually it. Consider returning it. Okay. Okay. Spend money on things that provide lasting joy. Um, they add more value over time, and, and, and yeah, and and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and and try to think about what you really about what you really not to impress others, but because that's something you that's actually something value. you actually value. Because there is a certain because amount, of keeping, a certain amount of keeping up with the Jones that I think keeps that I think keeps spending people more than they, they would otherwise. Than they would otherwise. Or them thinking, oh, them I thinking, see so oh, and so I have that. So -so have I that. deserve that too. I deserve that too. Well, it's not that you don't well, deserve it. You don't deserve but it. Are you wanting it just because they, they have it? Hmm. Hmm. Keeping up with the Joneses. I'm glad I asked you to give one more tip. You gave more than one. That's big. Um, sometimes the issue is trying to be like someone else or trying to copy someone else when it doesn't actually give you um, joy. Uh, and that can lead to stressful spending. Um, thank you, Dr. Jiang. This has been very, very, very helpful. Um, I'm hoping that people who are watching were able to glean um, a lot from these because you did, did drop a lot of gems, even through the echo. Um, sorry, we're going to work on that for next time. Um, but people are asking and they're wondering, you know what, this has been very helpful. I'm sure she has a lot more to offer. What would you say? Where can people find you, Doc? So I now have a podcast. So I now have a podcast. The Grow Your Wealthy Mindset. The Grow Your podcast. Wealthy Mindset podcast. It is somewhat directed, it is to, somewhat physicians, directed to physicians, but I think but that there are pearls I think that, that, anyone, pearls can that anyone can get at it from listening to from the podcast. Listening to the podcast. You can also find me on my you can website. Also find me on my website. Grow Your Wealthy Mindset. Grow Your Wealthy Mindset. Dot com. Dot com. Awesome, awesome. So I have a someone who's asking a question. Paying off debt. Do you recommend snowball method or paying off high interest credit cards first? What would you say to that, Doc? So yes, the snowball so, yes, method, the snowball you, can method you can actually do that by paying that off, by high, interest off credit credit cards credit cards high interest first. credit cards first. So there are so kind of two ways, to, kind use of two the ways to use the snowball method. method. You either do you the either highest, do the highest, or up. sorry, or you do the uh, you do the smallest uh, amount smallest of debt just to get that just done, just so that you can go to the next one. Or you do the highest interest rate debt. Financially, the better Financially, way is to the do the highest, to do interest, the highest rate debt interest rate so that debt, you can so that you can spend less on interest, less over, on time. interest over time. The idea behind the doing idea the behind smallest doing amount the smallest first amount is that you have less accounts, have open, less accounts open, and it's rewarding to see those, accounts, to see go those to accounts go to zero. 
But if you can also but just think can also just think about the total, about amount, the total of debt amount of debt decreasing, decreasing, and looking at that as reward, at that as reward, it, that can be enticing it, that enough can be for enticing you. That can be enticing enough for you. Then throwing it at the, highest interest, it at the rate highest interest rate will actually get you there. Will a little actually faster. get you there a little faster. Okay, so it sounds almost like highest interest rate is 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 a good way to go. Um, and you want to attack the smallest account first because that's less accounts open, so less effect on your credit score. Correct? Well, it's not so well, much that it's, it's so the effect of the credit the score. It's just that score, if you go that, from if you go from five debt accounts five to debt four accounts to three, to some people feel three, like that's more rewarding. Like that's more rewarding. But, if okay. your lowest but if debt, your lowest debt. Uh, like amount like amount is, is a lower interest a rate lower interest rate you're you're going to so end up paying more interest, interest overall if you're overall paying, if off, you're a paying off a lower interest rate debt before debt a higher before interest rate a higher debt. interest rate debt. True. true okay okay awesome 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 thank you and she says thank you for answering that question um so please uh we we're, we're, we're th this has been very very helpful i hope people are encouraged and not discouraged um to save uh more money to to spend money on things that are they value truly um and to sit down and as restrictive as it may sound to actually work on a budget because these things over time when they're not handled can actually affect one's quality of life um thank you again dr chang for coming dr Zhang. dr Zhang. <laughs> Zhang. Oh, Zhang. okay Zhang. 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 okay Zhang. um and what i'm going to do is um Zhang. okay I'm working on it. I'll keep practicing. I'm going to put your information, including the link to the podcast after we do this live. But thank you so much for coming. This has been very, very helpful. I've learned um, quite a few things myself. Okay. So thank you. Thank yeah, you, I'm thank sorry you so for the echo. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm for the echo. I'm trying to fiddle with, my settings. To fiddle with my settings. I don't know. Why it's echoing. Why it's echoing. That's okay. I, I believe the viewers got what they needed. So thank you so much. And on that note, we are done. Thank you all for watching. Please share with those who can find this useful. Um, and um, if you or anyone you know is looking for an awesome, a thorough, and a passionate family physician here in the Master Texas area, I am she. Thank you for watching. Bye.